this video was so hard to do and it still is hard to do i can't even tell you how many times i've been trying to record this but there is so much information i need to provide to you guys for you to get a good understanding as to why the title is the way it is so i'm going to make everything as concise as possible i'm going to do my best to explain everything so then all of this makes a lot of sense okay let's start from the beginning so a couple of weeks ago, I found out that Konami renewed the Silent Hill trademark. And it is true. They did renew the Silent Hill trademark. Exactly a month ago. This was posted almost a month after they renewed it. And unfortunately, this source did not have the source. So I had to find it and dig it myself. But it is true. Konami did renew the Silent Hill trademark. I know this is on the Government of Canada website. But keep in mind that if there is an agent from different countries that represent, or different states that represent a whole company, they can renew the license as they please, or whenever they need to, so then they won't have to pay an additional fee or whatever. So, that's something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about Hudson Soft and them renewing Bloody Roar. Now, they renewed the Bloody Roar trademark in the US for Bloody Roar 2 to be released on the PSN store which was released in 2010 now keep in mind that in 2009 this was before they were completely acquired by Konami which was in 2011 of January now something else to keep in mind is that there were no layoffs or staff reductions announced after the buyout. So Hudson was not hurt in any way. In fact, before 2011, around the time Bomberman Act Zero was in development or when it was a, uh, published or whatever, when Hudson and Konami were working together, uh, this was around the time that Konami purchased 3 million shares in Hudson Soft, basically strengthening the company in some sort. Now, something to remember is that yes, while Konami is uh while Konami does own Hudson, Konami is simply the parent company of Hudson. Anything under Hudson will be distributed by Konami. Like Bomberman, Super Bomberman R. This game was released on the Nintendo Switch. This game was in development before the Switch was even announced. That's why it was a Switch launch title, which means Hudson worked on this. And yes, while Konami owns Hudson, they do technically own Bomberman and Bloody Roar. However, it's still Hudson's like priority to make Bomberman games, not Konami themselves. Now, I mentioned the whole parent company thing because when there was a charity event going on with different developers and publishers and whatnot, on Crystal Dynamics in particular, on their Twitch, when they were streaming, someone here asked them if they would be down to bring back Gex the Gecko, an IP that they own, and they said that they would be open to it, which means that you're not supposed to go to Square Enix for Gex to come back. You're supposed to go to Crystal Dynamics for Gex to come back. The tricky thing with Bloody Roar is, well, Hudson is defunct as their own separate branch. So they're just in Konami. So you won't ask Konami for Bloody Roar. You will ask Hudson for something Bloody Roar related. Now, going back to Konami in particular, though, there was a title that they released that they made. Uh, called Hypersports on the NES. It was released in 1984, about 25, maybe 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And it turns out that they actually remade it or rebooted it or whatever the R stands for in this. This was revealed at Tokyo Game Show last year, if I recall correctly, but this is basically this game from the NES years ago that they brought back. So please keep in mind that Konami slash Hudson have been Pretty much bringing back a lot of old shit. Especially when you consider the Castlevania and Contra collection and whatnot and all that other stuff. So, 
yeah it brought back Bomberman Hudson brought back Bomberman and they brought back Contra now in 2011 the new Contra game that we know now was teased but it never got any updates or anything they never say anything on it they were just silent about it but eight years later at E3 we finally know what it is and it was revealed at Nintendo's E3 conference now let's fast forward a little bit within the same E3 there's actually Hudson properties on this TurboGrafx-16 Mini that were coming back essentially on this console and Adventure Island is a Hudson property you can see the B on his hat so yeah also if you just google it you'll know that Adventure Island is indeed a Hudson property otherwise if they were super duper like if they really owned Adventure Island he would probably have a K on his hat or something like that but no it's a Hudson game so Hudson is still alive they were just under Konami and what they make are under us because we don't know now Konami was at Gamescom, but they'd only have booths for Contra and Rogue, uh, Contra and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pro Evolution Soccer. <sighs> but now, it's time to go to the meat and potatoes of this video. And it's for Bloody Roar. Now, I know this site looks familiar, and it's because, well, it's the same Canadian website that Silent Hill was updated on. Now, if you look here... It still says the registrant of the Bloody Roar series is Hudson Soft because they still technically own it, they're just under Konami. Now, if you check out the history of the trademarks activity, you will see that in 2013, two years after they were acquired by Konami, that they updated the Bloody Roar trademark. Excuse me, renewed it. They renewed the trademark. When I was 15 years old. April 16th, 2013. But the kicker is that they updated the trademark in 2018. A year ago. Just a couple months after I put this video out in July. September is two months ahead of July. And they updated it just a couple months after that. Exactly a couple months. A couple months and two days in fact. So why is it that in 2009, they dropped Bloody Roar 2 on the PSN store to keep the series somewhat active, yet in 2013, nothing was revealed or announced or published? Also, the trademark is expiring in 2028 on my 18-year anniversary on YouTube, and I'll be 30 years old. I'm doing this video because I don't know if I'm going to be alive by the time a new Bloody Roar is announced or whatever is announced. But I'm inclined to believe that this is definitely not uh, an action done for a simple port, a simple touched up re uh, of, of an old game. Something to keep in mind is that fighting games are very complex because you have to worry about the art, the character models, and with Bloody Roar in particular, you gotta worry about like animals, you know, the fur and everything, and the the some experiment gone wrong. Like you gotta think about a lot of things just when it comes to a fighting game in general but with Bloody Roar is a little bit more uh, because of the whole animal thing but the particles, the artwork, the soundtrack the character models, the beast forms the stages the UI you know a lot of things are just factored, in, factored into it now people are under the assumption that Hudson's dead because they're owned by Konami but again as it states here there were no layoffs or staff reductions in the buyout for Hudson. Now, along with Hudson, Aiding developed the Bloody Roar games. Aiding, however, is not owned by Hudson or Konami. They are independent, which means they are contracted to work with companies to work on games, which means that the likelihood of them working on a Bloody Roar game alongside Hudson slash Konami slash Co Hudson uh, is very possible. Uh, Konami. Uh, has actually attended events like Tokyo Game Show. They were there in 2017 and 2018, but I believe they did have announcements uh, at 2018. As you can see in this article, it states that uh, they will have like a stage presence or something like that. I think I think it's it's somewhere here. Uh, 
yeah, 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 here it is. Konami's schedule of stage events will be live streamed on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. And I believe that's actually the same event that Hypersports R was announced. Uh, if you do some research, I do remember uh, seeing that. But yeah. So, Hudson essentially isn't dead. They're just under Konami. And they don't have their own branch, so there's no way to really contact them because they're in Konami. Like, Konami ate them, but they're still alive in the belly or something like that. So, this isn't me saying that Bloody Roar is going to come back in 2019 or 2020 or whatever. I'm saying that you should not be surprised when Bloody Roar comes back before 2028 the year that the IP is expiring. I find it really weird that no one, and I mean absolutely no one, talked about this. This game rant was almost a month late in regards to the trademark to Silent Hill. And Dual Shockers, Game Wire, Nintendo Wire or whatever. They never talked about the Bloody Roar trademark being renewed in 2013 or even updated in 2018 as you see right here. I'm the only person that knew about this outside of the company themselves. And now I'm giving it to you. So, that's about it. This is legit just the PS4 evidence video like I did for Crash Bandicoot except... With that, the difference with that was that I just knew Crash was coming back because he was in a PlayStation 4 launch advertisement. I knew he was coming back on the PS4, in which he did. He got an announcement at E3 2016, and his game was a timed exclusive. With Bloody Roar, however, um, I feel like it could also be a timed exclusive uh, on the PS4 and eventually come to different consoles, or it'll just be a PS4 exclusive, uh, and Hudson will work on it. It'll be published by Konami, um, and Sony will have some type of deal with it. That's my only theory with that. But, yeah. Don't be surprised when Bloody Roar comes back because a lot of people tell, tell, tell me that it's not going to happen, but they don't even know about this. So it just makes their arguments look flat in the end. I also see a lot of people joke about Bloody Roar being a pachinko machine, but <laughs> here's the thing about Bloody Roar. Uh, there's, a, there's a reason why I emphasize the fact that Konami doesn't actually hard own, hard own, if that makes sense. They don't fully own Bloody Roar or Bomberman. It's Hudson. You want to know what's funny about Konami and Hudson properties? Well, if you look up Bomberman Pachinko, uh, there's no, I don't think there's no Bomberman Pachinko machines because it's a Hudson property. Just like how Bloody Roar is a Hudson property. But if you look up a Konami-only property, you'll see that Metal Gear has a fucking pachinko. Because Konami does that with their IPs, not with a property that they do not own. Which means that Hudson, yes, even in 2013, in 2018, and this year, they still own Bloody Roar. The only difference is that they're not publishing it. It's or Sony's not publishing it. It will be distributed through Konami Digital Entertainment. Hudson is still doing their thing. So, yeah. There's, there's your TED Talk. I'm done with this video. I hope it was very informative and I hope it helped out. And, uh, yeah. Don't, uh, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. At some point, Bloody Roar will come out of the shadows and it's going to blow everybody away. I'm calling that. Not going to say when. It could be at Tokyo Game Show this year. It could be at the Game Awards this year. Oh, speaking of, I almost forgot to freaking show you this. Um, more, Funnily enough, my friend G-Man, my friend Gianni, he told me that... Uh, uh, He reminded me that... At the Game Awards last year, Mortal Kombat 11 was revealed. Another fighting game that was revealed at uh, the Game Awards was actually Soul Calibur 6. Both those fighting games were revealed at the Game Awards. And this Game Awards just so happens to be... The Game Awards that's going to happen this year 
It's going to be the fifth one, the fifth year anniversary of the Game Awards. Which means that I think it will be a nice treat to see Bloody Roar 5 revealed at the fifth Game Awards. I'm, am I saying that it's going to happen? No. Am I saying Bloody Roar will come back in general? Yes. Don't know when, but you can't doubt anything when this information is right here now. It could come out anytime. But I feel like it would be revealed at an event, not just dropped on by Konami on their Twitter or something. So, it's either Tokyo Game Show this year in September, it's either the Game Awards in December this year, or it's going to be at E3 2020, or bef uh, any other year before 2028. So yeah. Personally, I'm expecting Bloody Roar this year, or 2020 or 2021 the latest maybe 2022 because fighting games do take a long time and who knows how much heart and soul and blood and sweat they're trying to put into this hypothetical title i guess since nothing's officially announced but everything is here everything is here so yeah i'll see y'all later you have yourselves a good one and yeah Keep your faith.